live on Monday. What is the date today, Amelia? Six. February 6th. Happy February, everybody. Um, as you hop on, I love to see where you're coming from, as always. So just uh, say hello to me. That would be great. Today, we are going to do a demonstration about making this adorable project, the uh, Love Always Collage Project. Now, if you are interested in purchasing this, today is the day to get it because it's on sale 20% off, which means it's what, only $16? Mm -hmm. It's a download, so you can just print it at home. Easy peasy. And so what I'm going to demonstrate today is the I'm going to demonstrate the heart and just give you some little uh, tips about the bird and this love banner. And um, so there you have it. Okay. The little, this is a wall hanging. You could turn this into a pillow, which is kind of one of my favorite things to do, create pillows. Um, so let's just dig in, shall we? Great to see you, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Is there any other business that we need to take care of before we get started? Amelia, can you think? Mm. I don't think so. Okay. I'm just going to dig right in. Um, Amelia is moderating comments. So if you have questions or comments, she'll be, um, letting me know as I work and I have my additional camera set up here so that, uh, I'll flip this around. Uh, before I get started, let me just show you what I've done to prepare. So in the download comes the gray tone of the heart, and I've just traced it. So I've traced it right onto parchment paper. Okay, Par this is my parchment pressing method. Now, let me move all these things. Um, I will be putting my, my parchment paper on this piece of foam core. It's just foam core that you buy at Hobby Lobby. And um, I cover it with felt so that it is heat resistant. And I'm just going to pin it here. I like to have my gray tone to the side so that I can look at it. And I'm going to turn it upside down so that I will work on it upside down. And that way you guys can see it really easily. Um, now, the other thing that I have sitting right here, so this is kind of my, my standard workstation. Um, and let me just show you everything that I have here. So I've got my, my little wand iron that is sitting on my iron rest, my silicone iron rest, because these do not automatically turn off. And many times I have left them on and risk burning down my house. So if you're going to use a wand iron, make sure that you have a silicone mat under it. And I also have my favorite tweezers, the Heidi Profity tweezers that have this really great point. And then I've got my Karen K. Buckley six inch scissors. I use these all the time. The other thing is that I have, um, I have all of my red fabric selected. So I just went over to my, my red scrap bin and all of these have been prepared with light steam seam too. Okay. So I'll show you this under the camera in just a second, but that's the, those are the scraps that I've pulled out. They've all been prepared with the steam seam. Um, okay. So let me dig in here and get started with this little demonstration. Let me see if I can change this camera. Okay. There. Now, hopefully you should be able to see my workspace. So what I want to show you here is when I'm looking at this, I'm going to turn this way so I can kind of see you a little bit while I work. Um, actually, it'd be really nice if I could just turn this 100%. Oh, well, we won't worry about it. We are expecting a new camera, which we can't wait for. Um, so for these streaming videos, we hope that our quality will jump up. Um, anyway, okay. So here's the heart. What I've done is I've, I count the gray tones. One, two, three, four. There are four gray tones. So for this easy beginner project, I'm going to count my gray tones and then sort my fabric accordingly. So the key with my type of collage is to incorporate as much fabric as possible. 
So I just go into my scrap bin and I'm going to start looking at them and sorting them. And right out of the chute, I can see, well, this is my lightest. And I've got this cute little, this little light polka dot. So that's really light. Um, this is probably some of my darkest. So I'm going to just set that there. So we'll add, so now it's just a matter of comparing. Does it go there? No, obviously it's too dark. So I'm going to put it right here. Here's another piece. How does it fit there? Nope, too dark, too light there. All right, let's set it over here. So um, it's a little bit like the Goldilocks principle. We're just creating, we're finding just the right fit for each piece of fabric. So each, uh, each value has its own collection, its own set of fabric. So now here's a piece. Yeah, I think it's gonna go there. All right, so can you see how this how this works? It's pretty simple. Um, I think all of those pinks kind of go together. Now that one seems to be a little bit darker, um, obviously too dark for that. So I'm gonna sit, that's the beginning of my, my final and fourth value set. And I'll bet the majority of what I have is going to fall into that value, this value set, this mid-tone value set, which will be the bulk of the heart. Okay, so just quickly, now that one could kind of go either way. Um, I think it's probably better there, especially looking on the camera, that kind of helps me to see where it might go. I'm gonna go there. Um, now we can make this one there's a really, really warm orangey red, and I really like to incorporate warms and cools. I think that looks really, really interesting to do that. So I will often add, um, now that there's another one that could go either way. So it really doesn't matter where I put it, as long as the majority of this value set is lighter than what we have here. And I can see I've got some darker pieces back here. So this will kind of solidify this value set. Okay, so now I'm seeing really for these, let's see here. Yep, those are, I don't, I don't know if I want to use that. That's just because it's a really muddy red, but I'll put it in this value set just in case. So now I feel like I've got, I've got my darks and really the darkest ones are over here. So I kind of want to pay attention to where my darkest ones are. So I've got my, my darks my mids, and then my transition color to the highlight. So there we go. We've got everything that we need. Now I'm just going to set this aside. So again, don't forget, if you have questions as I'm working on this, go ahead and um, type them in. Amelia is moderating the comments. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to get started. Oh, the other thing I have nearby is my pin cushion because I like to use pins to score um, my the, the paper on the back side. So I think I'm actually going to just get started right in this midsection here. Um, and that is this value set. So here are my pieces. I'm just going to make kind of a random cut and score the back side, peel it off and put it in position. Now, these first few pieces, let me pull my trash can over here. These first few pieces aren't going to stick very well to the uh, parchment paper because parchment paper is a non-stick surface. So a little bit of heat with my wand iron will ensure that the, the pieces stick really well. Someone said, do you need more lights? Do I need more lights? Light fabric. Oh, yeah. In fact, I was going to have Amelia. So that's a good question. So somebody asked if I need more lights. Um, I only have two. So the, and they're just for the highlights. So the highlight is here and here. Let me show you on the gray tone. So here's the highlight and here. So I probably will want some more. So I'll have Amelia go over and see if she can find any more um, light fabrics. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is just ensure that these pieces overlap each other. And it doesn't matter if it's um, by an eighth of an inch up to an up to a half inch is about the, the correct amount of overlap. Um, I am again pressing this piece to the parchment paper, not to the piece next to it. 
And that will ensure that if I want to make changes, I can still lift it away from the parchment paper and it won't be adhered to the other pieces of fabric around it. Here's a piece that's just a really lovely hot pink. Um, again, I, I like that juxtaposition of warm and cool and kind of some analogous colors in there. I just think it looks really pretty. Curious if you've ever heard or tried the Pellon Easy Steam 2 Light. The description sounds similar to Light Steam Seam and about the same price point. So somebody asked a question about Pellon, if I've ever tried the Pellon. I have not. Um, I encourage you, if you come across a product that you think might be interesting, it might work, go ahead and try it. For my, um, for my work, for parchment pressing patterns, the Light Steam Seam 2 is the product that I've developed to go with uh, this parchment pressing method. But there might be other fusibles that work really well. I, I just don't know. I don't I have I don't use those. So I can't I can't say. How do you know if you need tra a transitional piece? So this is that was a that's a good question. Somebody said, how do you know if you need a transitional piece? So um, one thing here, we don't want this to look like a really, really dark, dramatic outline. We need some transition into the into these lighter areas, especially right here where it goes to value, it jumps to values. So um, and that's why I call this a transition because it's trans it's in between the highlight and the midtone section. So just sometimes I just need you need to be careful that your contrast is not too prominent. And in those areas where the value is too high, that the contrast between the value is too high, then I think about just using a transition to kind of soften the um, the distinction between the, the really light and the really dark. So I hope that answers the question. And, and actually, you know, as I have been doing this more and more and teaching a lot, um, my I'm learning every single time I teach and do a workshop or do a new project, I'm learning and trying to improve myself. And one thing that I've kind of been thinking about a lot are these transitional areas. So, you know, I, that's just something that I've recently started talking about transition areas, because that's something that I'm teaching myself. So Amelia's in the back looking for, have you got, are you looking for the light pink? Yeah. I think the light, a light pink is probably the best place to find a good transitional. Here's that super lovely red orange color. I really like that. Oh yeah. Perfect. Let's just take, I think that one looks totally tan. Yeah. Let, that one's tan too. Let's look in the white. So we've got now for those lights, we've got those, but pull, let's look in the white. So she pulled over a few pieces that are, this one might work. How white? Well, I don't know. I think the one that you just pulled out is going to work fine. Do you want so I think three is sufficient. So we've got three pieces now for the highlights. So those three, they look really good together. But that one is just much too tan. And we want it to look like a bright, shiny, cheerful heart, not a drab, um, dead, beating, dead heart. Oh, there's my little liney. Are you off? Yeah. Okay, goodbye. I love you. Drive safe in the snow, okay? Yeah. Okay. What time do you think you'll be home? Probably around 5 or 6. Okay. I'll, I'll, we'll have dinner ready. Love ya. Okay, love you. Bye. My college daughter <laughs> off to her classes and work for the day. Do you always start in the middle? Somebody asked, do I always start in the middle? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, I um, oftentimes I will start in the darkest area, but I didn't do that today just because this is the largest section and I just kind of want to start laying pieces down. It's 
it's a really small project, so I'm not super concerned about where I start. But I do think what I'm going to do is start incorporating some of the dark colors now. That's going to be kind of the next thing so that I can ensure that I've got um, a sufficient uh, quantity of the dark fabric. Where do they find this pattern? So where do you find this pattern? Let me explain. On my website, so if you go to collagequilter.com, um, and then in the shop, we have digital downloads. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Digital downloads. Click on the digital downloads. It's, it's a pattern. Digital patterns. Digital patterns. So digital patterns, that's where you can find it. Um, and it's also the very first thing, I, I believe it's yeah. linked on the very first, the landing page of the, the front page of collagequilter.com. It's the very first thing you'll see. So if you just click that link there, it will take you to this pattern as well. Um, and in this pattern, so obviously we've got the heart, we've got the bird and, you know, the entire, all the, all the pieces plus instructions. Um, this is just kind of a supplementary thing that I like to do because I want you to understand how fun and easy it is to do collage. I don't want people to be intimidated. So it's uh, worth my time and effort to make sure that you have success and feel comfortable with this. Is there a rule you use to gauge the size you cut your pieces? Oh, great question. So somebody just asked if there's a rule that I use to gauge the size of the of my cuts. Um, yeah, so you can kind of see the size that I'm cutting. They're all really similar in size. Um, generally speaking, I don't cut anything larger than the palm of my hand or smaller than a fingernail. Um, I will occasionally break the rule about cutting smaller than my fingernail. If I'm working on an eye, for instance, or something that needs to be, um, really precise. Uh, for this though, they're all generally about the same. They're generally about the same size. Why not take the paper off the larger pieces so you don't have to remove it from each small scrap? Um, somebody asked a question about why don't I take the paper off the larger pieces? I think maybe like from the from the scraps you're working from, maybe. Why I don't take the like cut from it? Oh, why I leave the paper on like I this? I think. Well, the reason, if that's the question, I'm not sure I understand the question about why I leave the paper on, um, because it protects the steam seam. So I don't, you know, I can I can store this fabric because it's got this paper on it. As soon as I expose the steam seam by peeling this paper off, now I've got that sticky surface on there. I don't want to pick up threads and um, I, I want that to stay really tidy and and um, clean. I want that adhesive to be really clean. Um, I don't like, I've got all these threads in here now. I don't want to pick those up. I don't want them between the, the background that I'll end up putting this on and the fabric. So now let's choose kind of, this is a, before I lose that little section, let's make sure that we get that in here. And I'm not going to be super precise with the shape of this. It's somewhat precise. Um, but this, again, this is a really, really easy beginner pattern. And I don't feel like um, it's okay if I go, you know, if, if, if I go outside the line just a little bit, that's okay. Um, okay, keep going, Amelia, other questions? Now, one thing you might notice is I, I have not used the iron uh, because as I get as I get more pieces laid down, um, they will adhere to each other temporarily with that temporary adhesive, and 
so I don't have to I don't have to keep ironing each piece down. It's just these just the first pieces that tend to not stick. Now that one I might want to it's on the edge and there I'll just add again I'm being careful not to iron it to the other pieces around it. I'm just ironing it to the parchment paper. Wouldn't you do wouldn't you do the darker around first and then over, overlap towards the middle? So somebody said, wouldn't you do the darker first and then overlap towards the middle? Obviously, I didn't do that this time. Um, if it concerns you and you want to do that, be my guest. That's part of the reason I have these tweezers here so that I can I can lift these pieces up and tuck this piece underneath like that. So you can manipulate the order of layering if it matters to you. Um, for me and this project, it doesn't really matter what the order is. Again, because this is a very, very beginner simple project. And it's really fun too. And so sometimes the other thing too is I like to just get into the, the main subject. I like to dive in so that I can play with the beautiful fabric right away. Um, okay, when I score, sometimes I get, I pull little threads and I like to trim those little threads. Now this is an area where I need to be kind of careful that I've got my dark here and I need to make sure that I've got transition area between that super dark and the light. Um, so I want to make sure I'm using some of this, this in between those two. So let's just do that right now. Can everybody see and hear me? Okay. Could you place the gray tone on a light box with the parchment paper on top? Absolutely. So somebody just asked, could you place the gray tone on a light box with the parchment paper on top? Yes, of course. In fact, that's how I trace things all the time. Um, I don't work on that surface because that surface is really slippery. And you can see I like to have pins. Um, I like to be able to pin things down, but I do use a light box all the time. So let's see. There we go. That's where it's going to go right there. See how I like to use these tweezers. They're just fantastic tweezers. Oops, drop some of my fabric on the floor. Oh, I like that piece that I just picked up. Let's use it. I mean, like right there. You can kind of see that as I as I work, I I kind of audition the location just a little bit. There. Now one more piece right there. I think we'll use this one. So how fun is this? This is a fun little Valentine project, right? Somebody asked for light box recommendations. For oh, size. a light box recommendation. Um, good question. Yours is called Daylight. Mine is called a Daylight and it's big. It's a 18 by 24. Mine is an 18 by 24. Just bought it for Matt. Oh, Amelia just bought the same one for her husband who's studying architecture. So um, it's a great light box. I love it. Um, you don't need one that big. I think even you know, the, the next smaller size is, is a good, a good one. Uh, but that's the one that I like. I don't sell light boxes on my website, although I should, I should, I should find, I, I should be, see if I can carry what I, what I like. I try to do that. I try to carry products that I like and that I use all the time so that when you purchase from me, you can be assured that I'm the one that selected it because I use it. 
Do you try to repeat fabric pieces within the overall pattern instead of suddenly just using one fabric choice, which never repeats in the pattern? Great question. So somebody said, do you try to repeat the pattern or, or excuse me, repeat the same fabric um, different places in the in the design? Yes, I do. So, um, for example, I think this one right here, let's use that again, because that's if we don't, it might stand out. Our eyes tend to love pattern, right? Our brains love pattern. So if we see the pattern elsewhere, um, it just makes sense to our little brains. And I'm, I'm just really choosing from the fabric that I selected earlier, right? So chances are I will use it multiple times in a design. What are you going to do about those tiny little holes? Are you going to cover them up? Oh, great question. That's a really good one. Okay, so somebody asked a really good question. They said, what are you going to do about these tiny little holes? So if you can see right there, there's a tiny little hole. Um, right there, it's even smaller. There's a tiny little hole. So um, I have begun to embrace those little holes and I like to leave them because when I peel this off and put it on the background fabric, then the background fabric shows through just a hint. There's just a hint. And so it seems to me to just be more of a, a collage that it incorporates some of the, the back as well. Um, so I like that look. Um, I, I did it really, really strongly with lots of holes on, um, especially if my background fabric is going to be a contrasting color this is going to be on, I mean, I could do this on something wild and crazy, which would be fun. And then I'd see the fabric come through. Um, the original one was done on kind of a white fabric and it, you wouldn't even notice it because there's so much pattern going on in the design itself. Alternatively, if those little holes bother you, here's how you're going to fix it. You're just going to take your, and most of those holes kind of look like triangles. So just going to cut myself a little triangle here and I'm going to cover it up. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Okay, so now we're getting into that transition area again, which is this group, this coloring. Um, so let's pull these over. Someone said, I thought you had indicated we should avoid solid color fabric, but I think I'm seeing some. Have you modified that idea? Uh, great question. Somebody said, I thought that you recommended that we don't incorporate solid fabrics. And that is still my recommendation. I never, or I shouldn't say never, I very, very, very rarely use solid fabrics. And actually there is not one solid piece of fabric here. It just looks like it. It just looks like it. And um, so, for, exa for example, this one, well, you can kind of see, but yeah, none of the fabric that I'm using is a solid. They're all, it's all patterned um, or batik. So it's all printed or batik fabric. Um, I am a big, like, I break my own rules all the time. While I say don't use, uh, I, I tend to stay away from using solid fabrics. Um, if you have it in your stash, go ahead and use it in moderation. And, and I do that. I do that all the time. If I have it, I'm going to use it um, because that's the great thing about collage, right? We have scraps that we can use. Is there, okay. Do you mix batik and printed fabrics? So someone just asked if I mix uh, batik and printed fabrics. Yes, sirree. I sure do. I love to mix those fabrics. Let me get a drink here. Okay. Um, gosh, we're almost done with this, aren't we? Let's just... Is there a right or a wrong side to the parchment paper? Someone asked if there's a right or a wrong side to parchment paper. Nope. Not that I can, not that I can tell. Um, I think... There is, so my favorite type of parchment paper is the Reynolds parchment paper. Um, I've used off-brand cheapo parchment paper and I don't like it as well. It just doesn't have the 
non-stick that that really non-stick quality which is what we need with um parchment paper so reynolds has their name brand printed on here i can see it reynolds kitchen reynolds kitchens and then they've just got um grid guides but there's not a right or wrong the same the it's the same on both sides why oh sorry go ahead i was going to say same with the steam seam so light steam seam two, the product that i like that i recommend um it's the same on both sides even though one side has a paper that has a grid on it um it's the same on both sides why do you choose to build your collage um with the gray tone to the to the side instead of having the gray tone just underneath your great question so somebody asked why do i have my my gray tone to the side rather than underneath the project sometimes i like it underneath but um the parchment paper is not entirely transparent it's mostly transparent but i like to just make sure that i it just helps me to see it better so once i have the lines down and sometimes i can number the the gray areas um that that can be helpful, but this is generally, I have found to be kind of the way I like to do things. It's just personal preference. If you would prefer to have that gray tone underneath, that's great. Cause I did that for a while and, and that works really well. Um, can a pressing mat be used instead of parchment paper? So somebody asked if a pressing mat can be used instead of parchment paper. Um, generally, no. <laughs> Well, here's my reason for not using that. Um, I can't draw on a pressing mat with a pencil and I have multiple collages going on at the same time. I like to be able to leave them on the parchment paper um, until I'm ready to create the composition. So you don't wanna have to have six different pressing mats, they're expensive. Just use parchment paper. It's like three bucks at the grocery store. So while the concept is the same, it's a non-stick surface. Um, I find that it's, no, it doesn't make sense for me because I have lots of, lots of projects going on at the same time. And I like to keep my projects on the parchment paper and I like to be able to draw um, the design. Other questions? Can you explain a little bit more about how you randomly cut your pieces of fabric? Okay, so somebody asked, can you explain a little bit more about how you randomly cut your pieces of fabric? Well, one thing that you can see that's not random are the edges, right? So when I go to, when I'm working on the outside, I, I tend to match it to the, to the drawing, um, and that's easy enough to do. Uh, but I don't, I'm not going to, I, I like, I like the look of a kind of a random collage like this. I, I'm looking at this in the screen and I'm like, yeah, I really like the way that is looking. I think that that looks interesting. It looks artistic. Um, I tend to cut from the edges of my fabric. So that is generally, that dictates the shape that I'm cutting. So if I'm cutting this way, it's kind of a triangular shape. Um, and I that's about as much thought as I put into it. Um, but I am trying to make it fit in a certain area. So this one is maybe a little bit big. So I'm just going to trim it down a little bit so that it can fit maybe like right there. So you... Is the pattern traced on the parchment paper or is there another paper pattern under the parchment? So somebody asked, is the pattern traced on the parchment paper? Yes, the pattern has been traced on the parchment paper and there is not another pattern underneath that. I can slide this under here if I would like to. So, um, but I like to have it to the side of me to kind of refer. So I see where the, where the um, transitions or where the, lines are for each um for each value set here i go again i'm just cutting a straight line across the fabric 
Um, and I'm going to now just make it fit. It's really super simple because I just make the pieces fit and they can overlap. And um, yeah, it's looking really artistic and just charming as can be right now. I'm, I'm really happy with the way this is coming up, coming together. What would you say the difference is between your style of collage and applique? So somebody asked, what is the difference between my style of collage and applique? Well, there's a lot. Um, the main, the guiding principles for me doing a collage are based on color theory. I am applying my understanding of color theory to my fabric selection. So that's number one. And then my, um, the collage part, this method is really, really different than a traditional applique because it's all raw edge pieces and I'm using multiple pieces of fabric that fall into the same value set to create the color. Um, you know, with traditional applique, it's select a piece of fabric to go that would be this this one select a different piece of fabric that goes here but no for me collage it, it it's the opportunity to incorporate a wide variety of fabric and that's what makes my collages look so interesting because i'm incorporating a lot of different fabrics and it's more fun it's really fun to play with fabric and see how things interact with each other. Um, the other reason that I really, really love this type of collage is even if I, even if I were to provide you with the exact pieces of fabric that I use in a collage, your collage is going to turn out 100% unique because the way you cut the fabric and the way you place the fabric in relation to the other pieces, it's not replicatable. You can't copy it. So, everything turns out 100% unique. And um, there's something about that that I really like. I really like the idea that every single project that I do is going to turn out 100% unique. In fact, um, just to kind of demonstrate that idea, maybe Amelia, you would grab those ladybugs that I just showed you. So I'm working on, um, let me just, this is kind of a side note. So I, uh, I just, I, these are from my, um, my garden party pattern. They are a little, it's a little ladybug block, right? And from a distance, these look very similar. They're not the same. You can see that they're not the same, but if I put them under here and you look very carefully, they're quite different. And I love that, that they both look like ladybugs. They're both um, from the same pattern, same design, and yet they are um, all unique because there's different, different, some, you know, fabric differences. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I love that. I love that we can create something that's entirely unique with collage, even if we're using um, the same pattern and the same fabric. Let's see here. Okay, we're almost done. We are almost done. Let's just get this baby to put this baby to bed. Right, Amelia? Yes. We're on the home stretch. Do you sometimes find that you only use one fabric only once in a smaller collage like this? Someone said, do you find that you only use, sometimes will you only use one fabric in a smaller collage like this? Um, yeah, on occasion, you know, if there, if it's in my pile and I may only pick it up one time, yeah, that, that probably happens. Um, and I'm okay with that too. That doesn't bother me one bit. If I, if I, as long as it's just part of the, um, as long as it's part of the set, unless it's a prominent piece, you know, I try to always use pieces multiple times. So you can see those two. Um, I've used this one multiple times. I've used this one multiple times. Um, I really like this one. I've used that a couple times. So I try to use the same piece over and over again to to um, to create 
that pattern effect. But if I make a mistake and I only use one piece one time, that's okay. I'm not gonna not gonna fret about it. I actually don't make a lot of I don't fret a lot um, about making my collages. This is a really, really liberating, freeing experience. I have a lot of fun just playing with my fabric and um, I let, I just let things happen. I, I, it's the one thing that I do that I am super, super particular about that I really drill down on is fabric selection. But once I have selected my fabric, then I feel like I can just let go and have fun. So I just wanted to point out, this is a really good example of kind of a nice transition. So it goes from dark to light. And I think this piece is a perfect transition to kind of get us, you know, there without being a super, super dramatic, stark uh, contrast. What do you, how, how do you think you'll finish this project after you're done with the collage? Will you quilt it? Okay. So somebody asked a question, how do you, how will you finish this when you're done? Um, I will, um, I don't know. Uh, somebody asked if I'll quilt it. I don't know. Um, it, it might just sit in my drawer as a demonstration because I have to do lots of demonstrations. But show what the actual finished. Yeah, let me show you the actual finished project. Let me grab it real quick. Okay, so just as a reminder, here's the finished project. It is a darling little wall hanging. And um, Amelia, will you hand me the, where's the poster here? Yeah, the poster hanger. It's got, oh, you know what, it's right, is it under there? Amelia's gonna try and find it. We've got, it's always a mess oh, in the studio. Right here. Oh, I knew it was around. So anyway, this is a wall hanging and Amelia took this home last year when I got it done. Where do you hang it? I hang it on my door. She hangs it on her, on her door for Valentine's Day. So there's the finished project. I did not quilt it the way I finished it. I put some stabilizer a single-sided fusible sta stabilizer on the back, and then I um, embroidered. So you can see I did an, an, a velvet embroidery thread along the edge. I embroidered the love. I did some hand embroidery around the, the banner, and I think that's it. So I, I think it's really fun to have, to just kind of embellish with hand embroidery. That's fun. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one. Maybe I'll, I don't know. It's a great question. Okay, we're almost done. Yay, what time is it? It's 11.43. So I think I can have this done before noon. Um, and if you don't want to stick around, I get it. But I am going to finish it. And Amelia, we should probably find a background fabric for this to just kind of show how we'll peel this off. And then I'll talk about the composition a little bit. Um, so for those of you who want to stick around, I will talk about the composition. Um, will you have a tutorial for the rest of this project? Um, someone asked, will you have a tutorial for the rest of this project? Nope, I'm not going to do another tutorial. This is the tutorial but I will be talking about composition in just a minute. And I will, I have some important things that I think you will want to learn about. Um, so I'll do that in just a minute. I just, I'm so close. I just want to get done. Okay. I just want to finish. Well, it's important to note there's no need for a tutorial for the rest of it because the process is the same. Right. So I don't know if you heard Amelia, but there really is no need to watch the next the next creature, the, the little bird and whatnot. I, it's, it's exactly the same process. It's this parchment pressing method for all three of the major elements in this. And then the, the, the other thing I do is fussy cut. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Um, let's see here. I am just doing some, we're just gonna do a little bit more around this highlight. 
Once you remove the collage from the parchment paper, will you trim around the edges? Oh, this is a question that I get a lot. Once you remove the, the collage from the parchment paper, do, do I trim around the edges? No, I don't. So you might see that this has some imperfection. Um, I don't care. I embrace imperfection. Um, I think that's part of a handmade piece that there's a little bit of imperfection. So that doesn't bother me. And no, I won't. I never do. I've never trimmed around something. It's just not something that I, I don't think it's important. Um, because once I get the whole composition together, you won't be able to pick out those imperfections. And every single piece that I have that I've done has glaring imperfections that I could point out to you. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Every single piece that I've done has imperfections, but um, once the piece is finished, you never notice. I've said this a lot, and I'm going to say it again, that I want to think of, I think of collage a lot like um, impressionism. Um, impressionism is not realism. It's a suggestion of, of, a, of a subject, right? It's, it's a suggestion of a landscape or a suggestion of a still life. Um, you can see brush strokes. You can see things that you wouldn't see in real life. Um, it's not a photorealistic representation. And that's that's kind of important to me. I don't care about photorealism in this. I like the imperfection. Okay, let's see. Just a few more little pieces and we got this baby. When you quilt your project, what kind of pattern do you usually use? Somebody asked a great question. When you quilt your project, what pattern do you use? So I tend to, when I'm quilting, I tend to do what I call doodle stitching, um, which, which means I will look at the I'll look at the shape of this and I'll take this as a whole. So it's now a heart. So I will select thread. I'll probably change my thread. Um, I'll use a really light pink in the highlight areas and then a, a thread that will kind of combine, you know, for both the dark and the light. Um, and I'll doodle stitch. It's kind of like if I were stitching with a, if I were sketching with a pencil, this is the shape that I would do. So that's generally how I work. So for example, if I do, if I were going to be quilting this ladybug, the way I would quilt this is I would select a lighter color thread and I would do this area here just like that and then the darker thread down here. Um, then I'd change my thread and do black, and I would do black circles here and here and here. Um, the leaves, I kind of will tend to mimic or create the veins of a leaf with my, with my quilting. Um, the background, I tend to just do an overall meander stitch um, or a pebble stitch, something like that, something that's just an overall stitch. That's how I quilt uh, because I like to make sure that all the pieces, that the, the area of the collage, everything has been tacked down sufficiently. Um, so my quilting is quite dense. And um, I, I like the look of dense quilting and it serves the purpose of making sure that everything has been tacked down with thread. Okay, looks like we are the many, need to what? How many pieces of fabric do you think you use in this heart? Oh, great question. I think that is a great question. Somebody asked, how many pieces of fabric do you, do you think you've used in this heart? Um, let's let, I mean, we could do a guess. That's all I can do is guess. There's probably, I'd say I probably have now at least 24 pieces of fabric. I'd say 18 to 20, um, something like that. You know what I should do is count them. <laughs> I should count and see how many pieces of fabric. So now this little heart is finished. Easy peasy, right? 
Isn't it fun that we can do a little fun collage project and now incorporate this into a larger design. I, I'm really enjoying these smaller collage projects. Um, and then I can incorporate them into either a wall hanging or a pillow or a quilt. You know, this would be a darling little element to include on the back of a quilt, right? Okay. Um, generally speaking, actually, Amelia, I'm going to have you take this over and just press it with my big iron. Okay, so make sure the stain is off. All right, so Amelia is going to make sure the steam is off on the iron. She's going to press that so that we can show how the magic works now. Now, I want to talk to you just a little bit about these other elements. Um, let me pull them out here. Okay, so the other elements are, let me move this stuff the little love banner. This is an area where I, I'm going to explain what I did. Okay, thank you. Um, so I really only used three pieces of fabric. One, two, three. These two are the same. Um, this is the this is the same. Sorry, that's the third piece. So those are the same pieces. Then there's a darker gray in there, and then this piece. The way I achieved the dimension with this was using ink tents. So you can see how I've used ink tents right around here. Um, the ink tents, there's another ink tents tutorial a few episodes ago. So look for that if you're interested in learning more about how to use ink tents. So this was one of those um, times when I used ink tents and it really made this look very, very dimensional. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say about collage is many collage people are going to say use the same piece of fabric for this area that you're going to do elsewhere you know so you end up using only one two three four five there are only five different pieces of fabric in here well that works but i want to show you the difference between um this idea of being conservative and using only a few different types of fabric versus this one. So look at the difference. This is so much more interesting, artistic, and it's much more fun to create. So those are the two, two examples that I wanted to show you where I think always use more fabric. It just makes it look better. It looks more sophisticated. And once you kind of start doing that, you'll, and, and just kind of turn it over to the fabric, let the fabric do the work. The fabric is what makes it interesting. So have fun with your fabric. Um, the other thing that I want to mention, there is a, a little trick that I've used called a sass tracing. Um, I've done that multiple times on different videos. Amelia, can you think of when I've done a sass tracing? I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. So for little teeny pieces like on this bird, it's helpful to do a sass tracing. Sass meaning the steam is seam. Amelia, grab my blue fabric, would you? And we'll just demonstrate on this. Okay, let me find some blue fabric. And I'm just going to... Where's my pencil? Pull my pencil out here. Let's see, let's see what's on it. Okay. Okay, so let's use this. Um, let's say, well, actually, I want to use, I'm going to use this one. Actually, I'm going to use this one. <laughs> um, let's say I want to get this little area just precise as can be, or I want his little beak to be precise. And I really only use this sass tracing on things I want to be very precise. I did also use the sass tracing on the banner because I didn't collage it. Um, I, I didn't add multiple pieces in here. I just used the same piece here. So this is how I did it. It's really fun and very simple. So I've got this prepared with steam seam. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to pull the fabric away from the paper. I'm going to lay it down on the area that I want to trace. 
and I'm simply going to draw here that area. Then when I put the fabric back down, I have a nice little outline. So I can just use that to, uh, so I'm, this is like creating a puzzle piece, right? That's precise, precisely cut to fit in the area. Normally I'm cheating because I can cut the pieces any size, but this is one time where it's kind of fun to have this uh, option. So obviously I don't adhere it directly to my, um, I don't put it on the paper. I would put this on my parchment paper, but that's how you get a precise little piece to fit in an area that you might not want to collage. You might not want a freehand collage. So there we go. Okay, um, those are the lessons for today. I'm gonna turn this off. What? A couple more questions that okay. are important. A couple more questions. How, number one, how do you transfer the heart to the background fabric? Okay, great question. And then That's at what point do you use steam? Okay, perfect. Um, now, the most important question was, how do I transfer the heart to my background fabric? Well, here's the heart. I, I pressed it with my, my big iron on um, no steam. And the reason I don't use steam is because this is paper. I don't want it to crinkle. Is it the end of the world if I use steam? Mm, close, but not really. Um, okay, so now everything, that means all of these pieces have been adhered together. So the magic happens. And I can peel this little baby off in one piece. Look at that. And it still has the steam seam on the back. So now I can apply this to the fabric of my choice, the background fabric of my choice. Like grab one of those bolts of fabric up there and let's just demonstrate like, sure. So now I get to audition fabric. And can you see those little places where I left um, holes? Yeah, you can. If you look carefully, there's one right there. There's one right there. But to me, again, that's not something you wouldn't see it unless I pointed it out. And um, it helps this project to not sit, just sit on top of the fabric. It's incorporated into the fabric because we have the fabric showing through um, the main collage. Okay, so now, when to use steam. So what I would do is I cut my cut my background piece of fabric. And when I have all of my pieces um, finished and they're all on their parchment paper, then I'll create my arrangement, my composition, including with uh, fussy cut, any fussy cut elements that I want to incorporate. So the fussy cut elements that I used on this lots of leaves, these beautiful leaves and some beautiful flowers. You see a butterfly here and there. So all of this has been fussy cut. Um, you can purchase fussy cut, fat, fu we sell bundles that have fabric that has really great elements for fussy cutting or look in your scrap, you know, look in your bundle, look in your stash and see what you can find that has leaves and flowers to embellish this heart. Um, so once you have laid this all down and you are happy with the composition and the spacing, um, everything is balanced, there's not too much negative space, then it's time to press it with steam. So you only steam it when you're all finished and you're ready to quilt or embroider, okay? So that's kind of important. Now, the other thing is steam it on both sides. So you'll lay this on your iron or on your ironing board, steam, steam, steam it on this side, flip it over and steam it on the back side too. So that steam is going to help dissipate those temporary adhesive layers of the steam -a seam and make it nice and um, easy to manage, easy to quilt through. So there you go, folks, it's noon. I've been here for an hour. I'm sorry to take your time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this is helpful as you work on your love always project and i hope you get it done in time to celebrate valentine's with the people that you love 
Have a wonderful day. Talk to you again.